so that we have it. Yep, you oh. probably all heard that. Yeah, <laughs> so we're we're off. Um, so welcome to today's session um, where we are Home Birth New South Wales um, and we're celebrating Home Birth Awareness Week this week and we're just so excited to be hosting lots of beautiful virtual events for all of our followers but also some in-person um, picnics and we also have a fantastic raffle which I'll tell you a little bit more about soon as well. Um, but yeah, we're just really happy to have you here. And if there's any events that you're interested in looking at, um, you can just go on to our website, which is homebirthnewsouthwales.org.au and click on the events tab and it will have a full list of all of our virtual events that are coming up. If you follow our um, Facebook page, uh, Home Birth New South Wales, you'll be able to see all of the in-person events, the picnics around, they're mostly around the Sydney area. Um, so yeah, welcome to our webinar. Home Birth New South Wales is a not-for-profit organisation and it's run by committed, passionate volunteers who are dedicated to educating and supporting women um, and who, who wish to give birth at home, essentially. Our mission is to enable improved access and affordability to home birth services in New South Wales and indeed Australia-wide um, for all families that desire it. Home Birth New South Wales provides families with information and support in their pregnancy and birth journey, including linking women into an incredible list of home birth midwives and other services like doulas, birth photographers, um, placenta encapsulators, whoever wants to advertise with us. So if you're someone who would like to advertise with us, please contact us. Uh, Home Birth Awareness Week is an international event and it's where we aim to shine a light on the safety and the incredible benefits that can be obtained by birthing at home and support those who are seeking home birth by welcoming, welcoming them into our local and statewide communities. Home birth is a very safe option for low-risk women who want to have a more natural birth and reduce the risk of birth interventions. And I'll just show you, I'll see if I can share my screen. Um, but there's this nifty little infographic graph thing, um, which just provides information on the statistics around home birth. So as you can see, the, the likelihood of a natural vaginal birth um, without analgesia, episiotomy and other various interventions is significantly higher at home. And it's also um, doesn't come at a risk, a, an increased risk to mums or babies in low risk pregnancies. So I just want to, um, oh, I just want to come back to, yeah, saying that home birth is a really beautiful, safe option for most families. So our raffle, which has been organised by a couple of our incredible volunteers, um, is absolutely amazing. There's three prize packs. They're each valued at $1,500 and raffle tickets are just $20. And the uh, prizes include things like birth photography packages, doula training, um, postpartum meal packs, lactation consults, childbirth education. There's so, so much in there. So if you're interested in that, please head on over to our website. It's homebirthnewsouthwales.org.au. And there's a pop-up that comes up and you can follow the link to buy raffle tickets. Um, so yeah, please feel free to type any comments in the chat section or on the Facebook live feed and I can read any questions out that uh, might come up. So thank you for being here. Um, I'm Amy. I'm the president of Home Birth New South Wales. I'm also a doula and a home birthing mum of three and a lactation consultant and I live in the beautiful Blue Mountains. Um, our guest speaker today is Carly Humphreys, who's an absolutely incredible home birth advocate local to the Camden area. Carly is a beautiful birth keeper and she's got lots of experience in the home birth space. She's a gorgeous space holder responsible for facilitating mother blessings and women's circles and has a kind, gentle and compassionate nature. And Carly is also a home birthing mum and is passionate about supporting women on their home birthing journey. 
So welcome, Carly. If you'd like to, would you like to add anything into that? Oh my gosh, goodness me, Amy, you just said everything so beautifully. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. So thank you so much for being here. I know it can be difficult with kids running around and yeah, yeah getting. But it's awesome. Time. Look at all the people that are here with us. That's so cool. It's so brilliant. Yeah, so it's awesome. yeah. Thank you all. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Tonight's That's session good. is yeah, it's all about um, setting up your birth space, your home birth space. So I'll just start with some questions that we already have. And then if anybody has any questions they'd like to add in, please just jump in. Either you can speak the questions or just type them into the chat box. So the first question um, we've got is how should a birth space feel to promote a positive home birth? Oh, I see. I love this one. When you were discussing this, I think first and foremost, it should definitely be your headspace, um, which is not so much of a, a physical thing. It's not fairy lights. It's not candles. It's more um, getting yourself in the right space to birth your baby at home or your babies at home, whatever you're choosing to do in life. Um, I think personally, that's the most important thing to start with is making sure you know if you've got previous birth trauma or if you're holding on to any fears um who can you chat to about that you know is there a doula are you connected to a local home birthing group which i will shout from the rooftops are just amazing to connect with because you're surrounding yourself with like-minded people so if you're having the tiniest little fear there might be another woman or another family in that same group who has had exactly the same fear. Um, so def definitely one of the first steps to what I see as a positive home birth would potentially be your mind space, not so much the physical space, but your mind space, your heart space, your womb space. How's it all feeling? How are you flowing? Getting that in schmick condition first, I think would be a really lovely step and a, a really great place um, to start. And of course, you can keep reassessing that as you go on. You, you, and you could start this journey before conception. In fact, you could start joining those local groups and seeking who else is a home birther in your community and really sussing out and, and finding out all those, all those beautiful things that are drawing you to home birth. But Definitely getting it in your headspace to start with is a really good one. Um, another one that I wrote down was checking in with the people that are going to be in your space as well, um, because they can actually factor into your experience. So if you've got, you know, Auntie Jane, who's a little bit of a nervous Nancy Gasper in life, um, maybe it's a good idea to maybe reassess if Auntie Jane should be in your birth space and even as a doula myself I'm very big on everybody in that space needs to have a role and a purpose um, and they need to be on the same page as you so being really clear that you're connecting with your midwife that you feel safe and comfortable with everybody in your space um, is definitely going to help to promote a positive home birth um, and it also ensuring that your partner how they feel as well is a big thing as well although we spoke about other people in the space but um, making sure that your partner is is feeling the same as you um, getting them on board is a, is a really good one like it might be easy it might be hard but if your heart if your little home birthing heart is set on a home birth then definitely do it and if it means um you know maybe getting a doula to chat with your partner or getting a home birth midwife to chat with your partner if they're bringing any fears or if they have any fears or worries or woes it's a good idea to maybe get that sorted as well because you don't need anybody in your space throwing gasping or throwing your vibe up or, or panicking um yeah what do you think amy is there anything else to add to that one <laughs> No, I think that was actually really beautiful. I think you addressed the, yeah, that feeling of the birth space and just yes. 
how important the people that are in there and surrounding you in that space are Mm. because we all carry our own yeah our own stuff into various different situations and you really just want people there that are 100% there for you um and they're not they're not bringing all of their baggage and everything into that space it's so important so and thinking thinking of that as well um something else that is obviously that we know is going to support that positive home birth is ensuring that all those lovely hormones in your body have the opportunity to flourish so I mean of course everybody's different but we know that mammals love to be dark they love to feel loved you know it, it feels nice however that feels nice to you it could be Led Zeppelin, whatever does it for you. It could be music, it could be candles, it could be being in the dark or it could be outside. It's um, definitely giving your body the opportunity for those natural hormones to flourish. Yeah, well. absolutely. I think that's, yeah, you've you've hit it on the head. And I think, um, yeah, <laughs> it's just, sorry if you can hear my children. Oh, no, I can't. In the background. That's okay. We all have children. Um, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think it, yeah, it's absolutely, that's all so beautifully important. Um, So I think, yeah, promoting a positive home birth, yeah, that's just covered it. And then in terms of what sort of things a woman might do when preparing her space for birth, more um, of those, like, I suppose, practical tools or physical tools. Do you have any, yeah, any suggestions around that? Yeah, I loved personally, um, being able to be very intentional in my space and putting that energy into my space. And let me tell you, I put my frustrations into that face as well. You know, when I'm waiting for baby and baby was in an undesirable position and all that stuff that just happens, you know, being very intentional in your space. It could be journaling. It could be meditating. It could be listening to music. It could be birth visualizations. It could be, even be listening to podcasts, sitting on the floor, playing with your children, getting that, again, making your brain associate that feeling with how lovely and relaxed you feel in that space. It will then re-remember that exactly same feeling when you're doing those same things in your birth space so listening to that same music or seeing your children or seeing a picture of your children in that space but that is a way of being able to prepare the space Um, another beautiful thing is also inviting a little bit of ceremony and ritual into the space Um, That could be done with a mother blessing ceremony. So having a a gorgeous group of women come around and share intentions and bless the space with all this delicious energy that you're going to be feeding back on. And again, remembering when labor and birth comes of all the women that have sat with you and the intentions that they've poured into that space, I think is a really lovely one. So being intentional in your space and meaningful as you move through that space because that's we live how we birth and we birth how we live so that's a really lovely way to bring that that energy and flow in into that space I'm just checking my little notes at the same time or another one for this one was um towards the end I've noticed a lot of women that I've supported with home births they become quite selective with who they're allowing into their space so again if um you know, Auntie Jane, the gas bar is coming in and saying all this stuff that you don't need in, in your space. Um, maybe meet her at the park instead or, you know, be intentional with who's coming into your space as well. Um, and if you feel that there are the vibes in there that you don't need, cleansing and getting it all out and starting fresh because, again, you're in control of this experience and you can do whatever you damn like. <laughs> so if it's if it's not feeling good change it around change furniture around um cleanse open the windows write it all down burn it on a piece of paper be intentional I think in your space is is my faith anything else no I think that's I think that's really beautiful and um one thing that I've noticed with mother's blessings that I've attended and with my own mother blessing um was that having it in the space where you intend to birth your baby can be really powerful because yeah, you just, um, I don't know, there's, there's something about 
having been in that room with a group of women or, you know, if you want men in that space, absolutely fine as well. Um, but just with people that are there absolutely for you and just surrounding you with blessings for a beautiful birth. And then I remember just looking over to where we had sat because I, I did give birth in a birth pool with my third home birth. Um, but we sort of sat away from where the birth pool was set up. Mm. And I remember looking over there and remembering the women that sat there and held me in that space. And I think, you know, mm. yeah, there's there's a lot of beauty and intention around that um, that just, yeah, it infuses that space with so much love and positive energy for a beautiful birth. Mm. You draw on the energy, don't you? And it could even just be conversations that you're having with people in that space it's it all absorbs doesn't it and yeah yeah sings to you <laughs> absolutely and you remember those things and then there's like there are things that you might have created within that space as well whether they they be you know clay sculptures or mm. uh, a necklace or um, various different things and often women will um, choose to have almost like a, a cord tying ceremony or rather than cord yes. tying like the the hand fasting or binding um mm -hmm. around the circle and so you feel really connected and you can look at that and go oh yeah mm -hmm. everybody's holding me everybody's mm -hmm. there for me um she's just yeah it's so beautiful mm -hmm. so, yeah and so what are some of the things that might be needed in the birth space when you're planning a home birth you know, what, what do we normally need? Good energy. <laughs> it's a boring one, but it's, it's a really important one. Um, again, it's sort of like overlaps with what we discussed with the previous um, questions, but it's definitely the right people. Um, definitely the right people that need to be aligned to you and your values and your birthing philosophy um i mean of course we need lots of practical things like checking things like making sure that the taps have the little fixture to click on to your birth your little birth hose to go into the pool if that's what you're choosing to do um towels lots of towels are a really good one to have close on on tap close by <laughs> wherever you're choosing um tinctures are a good thing to have in the space if, if that's what you're choosing to do um what other practical things what are the practical things that I write down oh other practical things like colanders that can be very useful in holding placentas if you're you know still still around in the birth pool or even not um little nets as such can be very good if there's like some sort of a, a birth pool situation where you need to fish out a little bit of a poo and that's fine everybody loves a bit of a, a birth pool poo in life and you just scoop it off and it's the best thing right <laughs> um they're always really good drop sheets are good to have or tarp you know so you want to think of your whole house as as the birth space and be able to move around your house however you please you don't have to be just fixed in one room or just in the pool um you may want to go lab labor in the shower you may feel really comfortable leaning over the back of the lounge whatever suits and then being able to have these things close to hand where they can just make you more comfortable so you can make yourself a a birthing nest almost you know if it's on the lounge or on the bed or in the kitchen kitchen bench is a really lovely place to to make yourself a nest so practical things are really good um and then you've got the whole realm of aesthetic things um you know so candles unscented candles are a good idea if you get a little bit um you know, everything's so heightened when we're pregnant. So a really strong smelling pungent candle might throw your, your mood out a little bit. So unscented candles are a really good one. Essential oils, again, um, make sure it's something that's not going to throw you off. And if it is, get it out. <laughs> um, fairy lights are really popular and really lovely. Just create that whole ambiance try, you know, situation. Soft lighting, like really practical um things that can also be aesthetically pleasing and we also know that they're going to complement all the hormones um music is another lovely one a lot of women sort of create some various playlists that they can go and revisit you know during different stages of labor and birth and being able to have the opportunity um to mix it up is is a good idea um 
you know, with my second, I thought I would listen to all this beautiful, lovely, relaxing om music. And I was listening to reggae and Tash Sultana and banging my drum thinking I was Tash Sultana and that's fine. Um, so it's, you know, music, if that's your thing, it's nice to have a little bit of um, variation in life. And um, what else did I have? We spoke about the energy. Um, care for your children is another really um, something that might be needed. Um, so, you know, do your children, is there someone that is specifically designated to care for your children? You know, um, it could it could be a doula or it could be someone else. It could be a mum or a sister, someone that can be there to specifically look after your children. Um, and another thing we were chatting about the other day, Amy, was having that box for your children. I know you did this with one of your births. Um, and I think that's a brilliant idea, like having a little box or I was chatting with a family the other day and we were thinking of an idea for their toddler was to maybe have some uh, activities where the toddler can invest their time. So whether it is something frozen, so they sort of watch it over time, melt away or, you know, what, whatever it could look like, something that they that per, that toddler can invest their time in, and to have someone looking after the toddler, or you know, or older children, they don't have to be toddlers. Maybe it's a teenager that might need, you know, a bit of emotional support. But that's something else to include. I think that's everything that I had down for that one. Aesthetic things, oh, and also nourishment for yourself and for the people in your space. So whether it is, you know, baking a cake when you go into labour, or making a slice, or having soup um some labor aid is a really nice one to have on tap and nourishment for the people in your space as well I know it's not a tea party but it's nice to just you know have things out so people can just help themselves if they're in your space they don't have to sort of come and tap on your shoulder when you're in transition asking if they can make some toast or something which I'm sure they're not because that's why you chose them right because they're not going to annoy you while you're in labor <laughs> um is there anything else Amy that I've forgotten with that one I feel like I've they're all my notes then yeah. No, I think I think that's beautiful. I um, we did have a, a I called it my Murphy's Law box. So oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, a box that was ready to go with just like a change of clothes for me, yeah. and you know any of the things that I really wanted in my birth space if we were to transfer, which. Mm -hmm. Obviously, uh, by calling it a Murphy's Law box, I was of the mind it's there, which means I'm not going to need it. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, just with the idea that, you know, if anything was to happen, we just pick that box up and we go and then it's just seamless and easy and no one has to fuss and I've got the right sized underwear and I've got the yeah. pads I need instead of, you know, feeling like, gosh, you packed me size eight underpants and I'm pregnant. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those sorts of things, I think, yeah, yeah really practical and I love the idea with that, that it's no fuss. It's just like, okay, we're transferring. Let's just grab that little boxy poo that's all ready to go. And you're going to use it after you have the baby anyway. So how lovely that it's already in your space and it's just, yeah, let's grab that. Yeah, yeah, I love that idea. Absolutely. And I was going to add with the essential oils that something I know a lot of doulas will do, um, myself included, is introduce the essential oils on a tissue instead of with a diffuser. Yep. Because yeah, if you're if you're diffusing it um, far it out, it out with be... lavender and it gives you a headache, not yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not it's yeah. not the nicest. Yeah. So yeah, and yeah. it's easier, right? When you just put on the tissue, and then if my, if a woman's not liking it, you can just throw it out and burn it, get rid of it. Yeah. Other exactly. than filling the space with something gross that's going to make them feel a bit yucky. Totally, I think that's hugely important. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then the only other sort of practical things that I was thinking of that I had for my own home birth were things like mattress protectors, like on our oh, lounge yeah. and, yes. you know, tarps, because I did plan mm -hmm. a water birth and not every home birth is a water birth. So it's yeah. okay if you don't want to do it that way. Absolutely, right? But it's having those things on hand where you can go, I feel really comfortable laboring on the lounge or holy Hannah, I'm going to have a baby right now. Yeah. And you can just quickly set the space up that's going to make you and baby feel comfortable and your carpet as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you definitely want comfortable carpet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I think that's all I would add in terms of the practicalities and, and things. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, where can you get these various bits and pieces? So I remember being mm -hmm. really like, all right, where, 
where do I get, um, you know, drop sheets to prevent my furniture from getting covered in whatever, like, you know, amniotic fluid or baby poop or whatever it was going to be. Um, juice. Yeah. And <laughs> where, where can I get um, oh, a big one for me in supporting other women when I was, when I was still pregnant um, yeah. was where can I get things to take to these mother blessings, like the unscented candles or yeah. you know, the little beads for the necklace and those sorts of things. Mm. Yeah. Definitely Bunnings is your one-stop shop. I don't recommend, I don't recommend getting um, a paint drop sheet and sleeping on it under your sheet. Way too hot. Don't do that. Not a good, not a good one. Um, I mean, mattress protectors, we, we picked a few up from Kmart. They did the job beautifully. And it's just peace of mind knowing that if birth does happen to happen in the middle of your mattress, um, that's fine. You know, you can just peel that back. You can wash it if you feel like you can or you can just throw it. Um, and it seems like, you know, with, with towels and stuff that a lot of home birthing groups sort of like have a big box of towels and it sort of moves from house to house to house. So it's not as if... And home birth doesn't have to be expensive and elaborate and you don't have to go out and buy all new sparkly brand new things as well. Um, there's usually a box of towels that, that can be close to hand. I mean, um, the mattress protectors that we got from Kmart, they were pretty cost effective as well. It doesn't have to be too, too over the top. Um, and what was the other part of that question? The more, um, I suppose. Oh, the beads. Beads and stuff. And like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you'll have to answer the bead question because usually I always just have beads at home and I just love that that energy gets transferred from one mother blessing to the next mother blessing. To the next, um, mother blessing. Um, things like the sculptures, like the, um, the moon birth sculptures, they're really lovely. Um, the candles, I mean, I get my candles from Haven and Her, like all my little... Um, like all these little those ones and well, you can't really see it's a bit bright but it's a beautiful little Gaia um you know they're they're those things are really lovely but again you could just find them where, wherever you are in life it's whatever resonates to you and it's it's going back to being intentional it doesn't have to you know your birth altar doesn't have to look like anybody else's it's it's your space and it's your intention and it's your energy so it could be absolutely anything that you want to that you want to add you could find that you could find that anywhere in life um so the towels can be borrowed and where do you get your beads from yeah so I get my beads from all over the place. I've actually bought some specifically from a local crystal shop. And then ah. some of the beads will be ones from, you know, a bracelet that might have broken yeah. or um, that just That's has. How some, I tend to find them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah some special meaning. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and I agree. Like you can just pick these things up from anywhere. Mm. I, I know women that have you know, drilled out little nuts or even like seashells oh, that's as beautiful. a bead for a necklace. So, um, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it can be whatever feels right to you mm. realistically. And for my, I should have brought it in here actually, but for my, um, my third labor and birth, we actually created beads, um, from clay, like just mm. that sort of, um, air drying clay and, so each person within the mother blessing created this little bead that I then had on a necklace. And yeah, that was really special. Um, and we've just got a question. So Jess asked, what's the significance with the bead necklace things? So would you like to describe that or explain it a little bit, Carly? Yeah, from what my understanding is and the way that I do it when we do mother blessings is that the women that you're inviting to your blessing ceremony, they choose a particular bead that they're drawn to. And like Amy said, it, it could be off a bracelet that's broken off that's been yours. Um, and what we generally do is that each everybody goes around the circle and says a little story. It could be a particular gemstone that they've brought. And that gemstone could be something that, um, you know, could help their throat chakra or their sacral chakra is something that's going to make them feel really lovely during labor and birth. And all the individual women bring an individual bead that therefore gets strung onto a necklace. And then the birthing woman can 
wear that during labour and birth, they can see it in their birth space. If they transfer, they can take it with them. And essentially, like we were saying before, it's, it's like bringing all that energy from all those women and connecting with them during labour and birth. Does that, does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. yeah, yeah, she yeah, said it's that's really so sweet, sweet, isn't it? Yeah. It's really sweet, Jess. It's and it's a beautiful way as well to. Um, I think if I were to have a baby again, it, I would just want everyone there. I'd love to have like a bit of a birth party. Um, but it's a really beautiful way if you're not sure who to have in your space that you can still have all those the energy of those women with you. It is really beautiful. It's lovely. Yeah, and I remember with my own mother blessing, we had like each time someone gave a bead, they attached a blessing to that bead. Mm. And I had so many for my, um, for my second birth that I couldn't actually wear it. Then the oh, necklace was too heavy gorgeous. because we, we did this bead swap with um, the women in my Jewin group, which was done through the home birth group Australia. So there was like over a hundred women within wow that um doing group it was gorgeous yeah. and um yeah each of them had a little blessing attached to them and mm. so I, I remember sitting there in labor and sort of sort of rolling them between my fingers and remembering yeah. certain ones and the blessings that came with them and it was yeah. yeah that was really precious um and something I was going to say as well in terms of we were talking about mattress protectors before oh, yeah yeah a little hack that um my husband came up with I think but perhaps yeah. it's a long-term thing <laughs> and he basically we made the bed and then we put the mattress protector on top and made the bed again so oh. that if it came to it you know in the middle of the night you're you needing, it off. yeah you just strip it off and you're in a fresh bed made. Exactly. I thought yeah that that's a good fun. one yeah yeah so yeah that is a nifty one um yeah. Yeah, and so this is one that goes along with that Murphy's Law box. Um, mm -hmm. So if if a woman was to transfer, what sort of things could she take with her into the into the hospital? So I know from my own experience, I was quite shocked that you couldn't have candles because you can't have an open flame within the hospital. Boring. <laughs> But, yeah, so what sort of things can you sort of take with you to make it feel more homely? Yeah. Can't take your children, but you can definitely take photos of them. You can take anything off your birth space. Again, something like that, you know, the birthing necklace that you've been given and a mother blessing. It could be a few little affirmation cards. You can definitely take fairy lights. You can deck birthing suites out beautifully with fairy lights and I'm just like the crazy fairy light person when I get into a birthing suite. You just loop them around anything and it just looks lovely when, when you walk in, if that's what you feel like you need to do. Um, and that's where the idea of having that box in your birth space just works wonders because, as we discussed before, you're going to be using all these things in your immediate postpartum anywho. So it could be disposable, um, you know, adult nappy pants, which are fab after birth. Um, you know, an outfit for baby is always a really good one. Fresh set of clothes for yourself. Um, drink bottle is also a really good thing to take with you to have all that nourishment, like being able to put your icy water in afterwards. Um, yeah, change of clothes for yourself. And some women also have it on a trolley I've seen. So they've got sort of like, we've got one um, for the girls craft stuff, but it's like a little wheelie trolley and you can just wheel it from room to room. And it's nice to be able to, you know, if you are transferring that you can just have a bag ready, take everything off that trolley that you're going to be using in your immediate postpartum and take it with you with a few of those other little, little treasures if you've got a birthing altar. So it could be some affirmation cards, um, you know, obviously, like you said, you're not going to take your candles, but if you've got some fairy lights close to hand, you could whip those with you, take your pillow if you want. A nice robe is always a really nice one. Like it's just like a nice, lovely hug, you know, and they're nice to put on after you've had your baby as well. So something like that to wrap yourself up and to love yourself after you've had your baby is, is a really lovely one. Is there anything else? No, I think, yeah, I think receiving blankets and those sorts of things were things that I had, yeah. you know, that had my microbiome, all of the beautiful yes, bacteria from home on them. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, mostly it was yeah. just 
yeah, those little creature comforts. I, mm. I was going to show some of the beautiful oh, photos yeah. that we got. Um, yeah, so I'll put that them on. Because it's um, nice to have some sort of a visual reference, right? But you absolutely. can, um, oh, yeah, that's beautiful. I love the sculptures in that one. Yeah, so there's some, yeah, gorgeous sculptures, little candles in the background, and then some really beautiful affirmations. They're yeah. just... Yeah, divine. Um, and the images on those affirmations are really lovely, aren't they? Like to see oh, that they're actual real people. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and I know some women actually find it really cathartic to mm. be able to make affirmations themselves. So they might, you know, um, colour or paint or, you know, even sculpting little sculptures for your birth space. It's, it's all mm. so beautiful. Um, yeah. And of. affirmations really have to feel good to you, don't they? Like sometimes I read affirmations, I'm like, yeah, right, that's a bit much for me. Um, so definitely like if you get a deck of affirmation cards, have a, have a read through and put out what really resonates with you and what feels good. Totally. And then what else do we have here? Oh, this is actually from my own birth yeah. space. Um, so you can see various bits and pieces. These are my kids looking at all of them. <laughs> um they your yeah. other creations yeah all the little creations and I actually had some of the things that they helped me set up yeah and then fairy lights little affirmations all mm -hmm. sort of set up near where the beautiful um pool is oh I want to have a baby now just seeing all those beautiful fairy lights I know and I know it's not always about fairy lights and candles but Golly gosh, doesn't it look nice? <laughs> it looks beautiful. Just hopping yeah. the pool, and like good. surrounded by fairy lights. And it's this good. is your necklace, Amy? Yeah, this is my birth yeah. necklace. So this was the oh, one that, good. yeah, it was a little bit big for me to wear because it was so oh. heavy. <laughs> but I even now I remember rolling some of them between yeah. my fingers as as I laboured. Um, yeah. I love that they're all in colours as well. Yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. It was, yeah, they're beautiful. And that was on the other side of the bath. Oh, so gorgeous. Sculptures and things that, yeah, yeah, my women had made for me, basically. A little drawing on the shower. Yeah, that was from my daughter, Willow. Quite yeah, because it, it, it helps all that oxytocin flow, right? Absolutely. Yeah, That's anything you want. Anything that makes you feel good. Yeah. So I actually had photos of my kids. Um, I had photos of the first skin to skin that I had with my daughter, Beautiful. just sort of on repeat, as well as some visualization type images yeah. that helped me to remember, yeah, the, the visualizations I'd done during my pregnancy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, just to bring and me pets, back. I forgot to talk about pets earlier. Pets in the birth space is also yeah. a really loved one that can, you know, help with oxytocin as well. Or if they're a naughty pet, then getting someone to take them away from the space. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I've got lots of beautiful photos um, yeah. of my last labor with my dog. Gorgeous. Just, yeah, they're so present. They're amazing. Yeah. And something really interesting that I've observed is cats and dogs are a little bit different in the way mm. that they behave in the birth space. Yeah. So often I find dogs to be a little bit more quiet. Cats will, um, they might come Get amongst it. Yeah. They, well, sometimes they're quite like tucked away and they'll actually come out once the mum starts getting to the point of pushing. And I always find that so incredible that, you know, our animals just are so amazing at mm. picking up on the energy and the vibe in the room yeah yeah they need to be added to a birth space I think like if they're a part of your family then they need to be there as well totally yeah um and then affirmations birth affirmations yeah. so yeah Gorgeous. anything that helps you to focus on what you're what you're doing mm -hmm. um and some women make buntings or birth blankets in their mother blessings, just yeah. knowing that they're really held and supported by the people around them. Um, yeah, so these are, oh, and books, always oh. books. So you'll notice that a lot of those are things that, you know, maybe not the candles, but the sculptures, a birth yeah. blanket, a big affirmation Definitely. thing. All of those you could just take with you if you mm -hmm. decided you wanted to um, into the hospital setting or wherever you were going if, mm. if that was the case. Yeah. 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 And so 
Now we're up to the question of, does your home have to be really big to have a home birth? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No, negative. No. If you live in the space, you can birth in the space, I think. Um, and, you know, if you really have that desire to have a birth pool, you can just jiggle some furniture around. It's, um, you know, if it means having it in your bedroom, maybe it could mean taking a bedside table out and pushing the bed into the corner and squishing squishing the birth pool down there, running the hose. You can, it's definitely figure outable in a, in a small space. So, yeah. you know. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, you know, it, a a lot of women um, will choose not to birth in a birth pool anyway, but I kind of think when that question comes up, I kind of think about how a lot of mammals will withdraw into a really small, tight, dark space um, when they give birth and humans are actually very similar. So it's wherever you you feel comfortable, right? Totally. And I I know of some women that have actually sort of almost locked themselves in the bathroom or crawled into (laughs) into their cupboard and just birthed in there because they just needed to feel like, yeah, protected and Mm -hmm. surrounded. So yeah, space does not need to be an issue. Mm -hmm. Um, And we did have a couple of beautiful photos that one of um, the women online agreed to share with us. So I'll again share my screen. I'll just pull them up. Um, And I think that just is a a beautiful way of really Mm. showing just how incredibly diverse these sorts of um, pools can be as well. Like that's not a huge space, but it totally works. Yeah. But how gorgeous that nobody else is also close to them, you know, that they're just in in their little nest over there. And this beautiful woman said that she ended up birthing her baby on the kitchen floor just outside of the frame of this shot which I love I love even more yeah so birth can definitely happen anywhere in your tiny house wherever you and your baby feel is the best place to be born absolutely I think we've got one more yeah oh look at that yeah isn't that just beautiful like they're just together in their little space Oh, it's gorgeous. Absolutely perfect. Thank you. I would so like much. to know if she's in an apartment as well. Like if that yeah. water just I've heard of people like emptying the pool out over, you know, into the communal gardens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think an interesting thing to consider as well is that, you know, if you are birthing in an apartment, um, some people get worried about, you know, mm. the weight of the pool, if, if the weight of the pool is too much yeah. for an apartment building or um, if the noise would be too much, like if a woman got quite loud. Mm. And so in terms of the weight, in uh, my understanding is in the vast majority of instances, it's absolutely not a problem. Um, yeah. And in terms of the noise, some women might feel more comfortable letting their neighbours know, like, there may be a bit of noise. Um, please don't call the police. We're not being, yeah. <laughs> nothing yeah, is Or a sign on the door. Out. Like I've been at yeah. first where it's like, you know, home birth in progress, leave us alone, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's okay. Um, and I actually checked the figures with this. So with the birth pool in a box with the mini ones, when that is 80% filled, it's 480 kilos, which I'm, and I'm to, I sound like a numbers person right now, but I'm totally not. This is why I checked it. And that, that could be anywhere between eight to 12 adults. So if you were to have that many people in your house, it's probably equivalent to, to a birth pool as well with, with that weight. Totally. And the, and the size. Yeah. Yeah. And if you consider like how much, you know, a couch weighs or Mm. anything and you're sitting on top of a couch, even like three adults on a couch could be the equivalent of that depending. So yeah, it's, um, no, I think that's a really good way of, of framing it. Thank you. You can make the space work. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. And so that's the next question. Does everyone give birth in a pool in a home birth setting? No, no, definitely not. I think because we see lots of photos of women um, in birth pools, I mean, water immersion is obviously a technique for natural pain relief. Um, 
So it's really lovely to be able to immerse yourself in water and um, reap the benefits of pain relief in that sense. Um, but no, definitely not. Some women are drawn to birthing their babies like on the kitchen floor, on land, you know, so it's, you definitely don't need a, a birth pool. Um, but if you've got a bath, you can always labor in your bath. There's always the shower. There's always the hot running water of the shower if that's what you feel drawn to. Mm. Um, yeah, so that's another no. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. And one of the things to possibly mention um, mm -hmm. is that some people say, oh, I feel like I won't be able to have a home birth because we don't have continuous hot water or yeah. a hot water service is quite small. Um, uh -huh. I've been at many births where we just put lots of pots on the stove and we boil them and everything's fine. Um, yeah. It can totally work. But being aware that if you've had a two hour shower, and you want to get in the birth pool after that, you might like to warn your birth team ahead of time. Yeah, let them know. Um, and the water urns as well. I've seen women that have actually brought or hired some of the water urns and they've like plugged them in like they're having a, a picnic in the park and then you just fill them up out of the water urn and then it just goes to the next woman that's birthing at home. So please, 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 if you want to have a home birth, just do it. Don't make excuses that, you know, you don't have hot water or you don't have space or, um, yeah, there's always a way around it. Everything's always figure outable. Exactly. Yeah, I love that. So that's sort of the end of today's session. I don't have any other questions for you, oh, Carly. Yeah. If anyone else has any questions within the Facebook Live or the chat, um, please jump on and let us know. And yeah. Um, yeah, in the meantime, we'll just wait to see if any questions pop up for a couple of minutes mm. and then, yeah, we'll call it a night. I want to go have a baby now, create a beautiful birth space again. <laughs> I know. It's just, isn't it just divine? Yeah. Watching these little people come into the world is just yeah. Yeah, so precious. And I think, you know, I was looking at some of them being like, maybe I'll just create that space for myself and go and have a bath. Well, I even still, I even still do it. Like I'll show you by my desk. I've still got everything that I had. Oh, that's beautiful. Because I just can't, I just can't live without it. I need to just keep doing this in life because it's, you know, I'm still being intentional in my life the way that I did with my birth space. And that's one of the biggest things I think I personally learned. Um yeah is is making motherhood magic after having babies as well like it it was so magic you know waiting for babies and being pregnant and creating that space and it's so nice to carry that on yeah. after having your babies you know if you're having a hard day to light a candle or to draw some tarot cards or to play some music whatever is going to make those endorphins flow yeah absolutely I think yeah. we we lose sight of so much of the ritual around life um and it's actually a really important aspect like ceremony is hugely important within our lives for just honoring these massive transformations and transitions um yes. so yeah I think motherhood really helped instill that for me as well um yeah. That's such a, a precious thing. We do have a question. So what would you suggest about birthing in someone else's home? I'm renting and I want to birth at my childhood home, but it's oh. also not really my space anymore. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I guess, I guess with that one, if you're going to birth in a different space, how could you make that space your space? You obviously are going to have a really good headspace. Um yeah, so maybe you could be setting up things at home, like a birth altar at home um, and all those other things, like the, the scents that you're going to be smelling, you could take those with you, um, you know, the affirmation cards. So it's like transferring really, I guess, you know, what, what can you take from your space that's going to make it your space? But that's really beautiful to go back to your, to your childhood home. Yeah, like a transfer. Absolutely, Jess. Yeah. So what, what can you take from that space? You know, you could have that. It's sort of like when you go camping, I guess, in the sense, like you take everything with you when you set up camp. So I guess you could view it in the sense, like what could you pack with you to set up for birth camp? It's called birth camp now. <laughs> That's a beautiful, <laughs> a beautiful way of <laughs> framing it. I think, you know, there are a fair few women I know that have um, 
birthed in rental properties and mm -hmm. You know, we just put lots of um, protective sheets down so that the carpet doesn't get anything on it. And yeah. and I do know of a few women as well that have chosen to go back and birth in their family homes. Or I love you know, that! How powerful! Oh, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. There was mm. um, yeah. I I just think of the yeah the incredible power that that holds if you've mm. grown up in that space and then mm. if you have really positive feelings mm. and thoughts around it what a gorgeous space to surround yourself in mm. I just I just think that's absolutely gorgeous yeah but I think in that sense like and even with you know in Airbnb it's it's like setting up for camp isn't it what can you take with you that's going to make you feel at home yeah absolutely so I think that is about it I don't think we've got any other questions um but <laughs> Before we do go, I'll just double check the chat. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, else. I think that's all that I can see. Yeah. So before we do go, um, everybody that has sat with us through this session is able to get uh, access. I should put it on the screen while I'm talking. Mm -hmm. um, to an Active Truth gift card. So Active Truth have been an absolutely incredible brand to be associated with. They've been so supportive of Home Birth New South Wales, which, as I said earlier, is a volunteer-run not-for-profit organisation. So we're so, so grateful to them. And they've provided this $50 gift card to anybody that um, joins our sessions. So please feel free if you're able to, um, either take a screenshot or use your phone to take a photo of the computer or um, yeah, just scan the QR code so that you can get $50 off uh, their incredible merchandise. And yeah, we just want to really thank Active Truth for their continue, continual support of our organization. Yeah. Um, so I believe that is the end so thank you so much carly it's been gorgeous oh, it's been lovely you. hasn't it no oh, thank happy you happy home birth everyone i hope you have a beautiful experience yeah me too and well done being here i mean Ooh, you know, i know excellent a fantastic effort fantastic step yeah we've got so many people on here so and thank you for yeah. your thank yous as well um we're just really grateful to be able to be here with you tonight. And yeah, if you have any questions, please pop on over, let us know on the Home Birth New South Wales Facebook page or go to our website, homebirthnewsouthwales.org.au and send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. Um, yeah, and thank you so much, Carly. Oh, thank you, Amy. Thank you, everyone. I feel yeah. like Oprah. Everyone yeah. gets a candle. You don't. You just get an active wear voucher. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's it's pretty good, I reckon. Yeah, it's a totally. beautiful, yeah. beautiful um, thing to get from yeah, being present. Well, thank you for that. And yeah, we'll love you and leave Please. you. Blessings for beautiful births to everybody. And yeah. yeah, see you soon. Gorgeous. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs> see ya. Bye.